Hey everybody, welcome to another Wild Wednesday. My name is Chad, I'm one of the naturalists here at uh, River Legacy. Today I'm going to explain something to you about math. Now, don't go running. When I heard that word math, you know, I used to think math was only invented to irritate English majors. But it's not. It's really important. And I'm not a big math fan, but this little, trust me, this little section of math here you'll find really intriguing. We're going to talk about what we call nature's number. And you may have heard of that. Um, and it was actually uh, first discovered, this sequence of numbers was discovered in the, uh, in the early 1300s in India. And then in 1202, I believe it was, there was a fellow named um, Leonardo of Pisa that brought this to the Western uh, world and exposed everybody to this phenomena that he had, he had figured out, that they had figured out in India and he brought over. He was a mathematician as well. They were mathematicians in India that came up with it. And it's um, the Leonardo of, of Pisa also was known as Fibonacci. So you may have heard of the Fibonacci sequence, the Fibonacci number. Uh, it's also referred to as the golden ratio or the golden number. It has a lot of different names, but Fibonacci was the person who brought it over. He was uh, an Italian uh, mathematician. And basically what it is, is a simple sequence. And I'm going to draw it up here for you and show you what it is. So you start with uh, 1. The next number in the sequence is 1. The next number in the sequence is 2. 3, 5, 8, 13, 21, 34, 55, can't reach there, 55, and it just continues going. Now if you look at this, it's pretty easy to figure out what, how this sequence is formed. So if you add the first two numbers, one and one, you come up with two. You add the next two, one and two, you come up with three, two and three, you come up with five, three and five, you come up with eight, and so forth. You can continue that on forever. That's the Fibonacci sequence. So why is that number important? What are these numbers have to do with nature? Well, if you look in nature, this number is found, all, one of these numbers, are found all over in nature. So if you look at almost any flower, it's going to have odd numbers of petals, three, num three petals, five petals, or not odd numbers, but Fibonacci numbers, three, five, eight, 13 petals, okay? If you look at the seed pods of the sunflower and you uh, count all of those seeds in there, they're going to come up to a Fibonacci number. And the unique thing about these numbers is not just the number of leaves or number of seeds that you may find, find in a plant, if you plot these on a graph, you actually come up with what they call the Fibonacci spiral. I'm going to show you exactly how that works. So if I do one square on this graph, that represents the number one on here. So the next number is one, so I'll do another one by one square right there. Next number is two, so I'll go down underneath that and do a two by two square. Okay? Next number is three, so I'll do a three by three square here, three by three, then five, so one, two, three, four, five, and one, two, three, four, five, go here. Next number would be eight, so we'll go over eight. I just don't have eight here, so I'll go all the way to the end. I think there's seven in this number, in this graph, all the way down to here, and come across there. So that's the number in a graph sequence. But the unique thing about this is if you take if you start with the corner of this first, gra first square you did on the graph, and you do a, an arc from this corner to this corner, that corner to that corner, that corner to that corner, all the way through each one, and you continue that down, you just continue that on as big a piece of paper or a board that you have, and you'll see the spiral. So that's called the Fibonacci spiral. And it's all based on that sequence of numbers. So that spiral is in nature all over the place. One of the easiest ways to see that spiral is to look at a seashell, a type of a nautilus shell. And if you look right in the middle, you'll see that exact same spiral spinning around just like that number that we plotted out. If you were to cut this in half, you would see those same uh, spaces on the inside. On the opposite side, or on the top side of a whelk top shell, You'll see the same spiral coming around in between there, going down towards the opening. So that's Fibonacci spiral is there. A pine cone. If you see a pine cone like this, and you can follow it with your eye, and I'm going to show you how to do this with one in a moment so you can actually physically see how it works. Um, 
you follow the, the pieces of the pine cone up and it makes a spiral around. If you count all the numbers in this pine cone, all of the seed holders in this pine cone will come up to one of the Fibonacci numbers, okay? It's, it's not just random, it's, it's actually there. Magnolia tree, seed pod, and it has the same spiral sequence that comes around from the bottom to the top. The Fibonacci spiral is in that seed pod. Seed pod. The sunflower seeds that I mentioned before, not only is the amount a Fibonacci number, there's several of the double and triple Fibonacci spirals inside the seed pod of a uh, sunflower. A pineapple, the same way. The, the fronds that come out of the pineapple are in the, the Fibonacci spiral. A uh, yucca cactus, same way, the blades come up in a spiral on those. Uh, even, this is going to be a little bit hard to see, but even like on a holly, the way that the berries come around the, the branch, they come in a spiral as well, and the leaves are also in a spiral, the same spiral around the uh, branch. So that's another um, way of seeing that number that spiral sequence. Even here, this is an extremely good example of all of these in one. So uh, if you look at this separate piece right here, five leaves on it, five is one of the Fibonacci numbers, five leaves on that little branch, Fibonacci number, then it goes up, there's three on each of these, okay? Three is a Fibonacci number, and then the top section, there's five again. And the funny thing about that is if you add all those up, you come up to a, a, a 21 another Fibonacci number on, on the, each leaf. So each branch of the plant. So it's amazing how, um, how that number shows up in all different places in all different varieties. So what I want to do now is I want to show you how to uh, paint that pine cone that I told you about. It's something you can do at home uh, when you find a pine cone and then uh, uh, that'll let you see what you're looking for when you're out in nature and then you can get out and do your own walks and uh, see what you can find on your own. So to do this activity, it's really easy. All you need is a pine cone and uh, a paint. You can use a marker if you want to use a marker. I just am using a paint on here because it shows up a lot clearer, uh, but you can use a marker, anything to distinguish the lines around it. So this is what the, tip, the pine cone is going to typically look like, and this is what it's going to be like when you're done. You're going to have the, the dots that you painted so that you can follow the spiral. The way that you start this is with a pine cone that you've soaked in water. If you take a pine cone like this and you soak it in water overnight, usually by morning it'll be tightened up like this, you can let it dry, and it'll take it long enough to open that you can do this while it's closed up. So all you're going to do is take your paint and just pick a spot wherever you want to start your spiral. And you can go either direction because the spirals will go both ways. And you're going to just start marking each one as it goes next to each other and up the spiral. at it you can actually it's very easy to see the spiral when you've painted it out on the uh, closed up pine cone not so easy to see on the open pine cone so that's why you want to do this when it's closed so that you can follow the spiral after it opens it'll look like an entirely different pattern once you get it opened up so that's just an interesting way uh, to do it you can do it with different colors because there's several spirals in there you can pick a different color and paint each one and then when it opens up you can follow the particular color as it goes around and follow the spiral all the way up to the top of the pine cone so this is just an easy way for you to um, do something at home if you find a pine cone you're out on a walk you find a pine cone uh, paint it up take a look at it see how it works and it, and it puts the, the Fibonacci number uh, to uh, practical use so you can see how it works. As far as things that we eat every day, if you take an apple, you cut it in half, you look at the seed pattern around the middle of it, there's five seeds around there. If you cut a banana uh, on the, on the uh, cross section, and look, it grows in three sections inside the banana. So it's, it's everywhere, it's an amazing thing. And what I encourage you to do is get out and walk around and look and just see how many different things you can find with these Fibonacci numbers, either the number, uh, petals, seeds, whatever, or see if you can find that spiral. And you'll be amazed when you really start looking for it, how many places you'll find it in nature just occurring on its own.